Um, I just wanted to quickly film um, a little, I don't know what to call it, um, had a scary moment and wanted to share it with you, maybe get some advice <laughs> from anybody who knows better than I do. So uh, it has nothing to do with Onyx here, by the way, I just got him out. But uh, my girl Ursula, that is my female uh, Eastern Indigo Snake, and George, the male, both regurgitated. Um, so they've never had any health concerns in their entire life. They've been fantastic eaters. Uh, and I think I know what happened. I think it is my fault. I messed up. So uh, I've heard from everybody that Eastern Indigos uh, don't do well with large meals, right? They are a high metabolism. They need small meals more frequently, right? Kind of the opposite of ball pythons <laughs> that like pretty substantial meals, but a little less frequently. So I've been trying to adhere to that. This was what I thought I was doing a good job. but And they've been growing great. They've been eating. They've been uh, defecating, shedding, no issues with anything. They've been great. So I thought I was doing okay. Well, they've gotten enough bigger that I thought it was maybe time to increase the size of their meal, right? So on Saturday night, um, in the evening rather, I gave them each a bigger meal than they'd had before. And they swallowed them, you know, they did okay. So I thought I was fine. Um, and then, let's see, about... 40 hours later, so it was Monday, I uh, went to do just some routine cleaning, right? Picked up um, Ursula, the female, and a little bit of dark fluid leaked out of her nostril, which immediately freaked me out. You do not want fluid coming out of your snakes, any nose, mouth, anything, right? Um, certainly not dark fluid. From, you know, a terrible moment, I thought it was blood, but I didn't know what it was. And so I held her for a few more seconds, and I was looking at her, and then a big gush of it, of really dark fluid, came out of her mouth. I just freaked out, right? I was just, I was devastated. I thought she was dying. I didn't know what was going on. Uh, no solids came out, so I didn't think of, you know, regurgitation. I just saw this fluid coming out, and I panicked. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. So I, uh, the, the vet that we use, our exotics vet, had just closed. So I got online. I don't like doing that because, you know, I'm not a vet. But uh, I couldn't talk to my vet, right? And it's not really that useful to talk to a, you know, a dog and cat vet about a snake. So I got online and someone said that uh, they had a ball python regurgitate. They called it regurgitating or, or regurgitation in the same way. A little bit came out of the nose and then a bunch of fluid, dark fluid came out of the mouth and they mentioned that it stank really bad, like it was almost rancid and that matched what I had smelled as well. So I thought back and I was like, oh man, I just fed her, you know, less than two days ago, a really big meal. I wonder if it was just too much, right? So I kind of thought that might be what was going on. Still didn't feel good, but I felt like a little bit better. Maybe she didn't have some horrible disease and was seconds away from death. You know, that's where my mind goes and my poor animals have something wrong. So, uh, today, Tuesday, came in. George had regurgitated the entire mouse, right? Just spit it back out. So, one, that stank really, really bad. I'm going to have to clean both of their cage. We just deep cleaned replaced all their bedding, scrubbed the, everything in their cages like five days ago. <laughs> but that's okay. We will do it all again. Um, so now I'm very much more certain that it is a regurgitation due to too large of a meal size, right? Now, it's shocking to me. Um, I had, I mean, again, I was warned, right? I was told they cannot handle huge meals. It's not like a python. It's not like a boa. Back off the meal size. Just give them more frequent if you want to get them more food, right? Not more size on their meals. 
and I thought that I was doing that. Now I'm not guessing. I know that obviously I was. It was too big. So I guess what I am gonna uh, ask from you guys is if you know of anything I should do. All I know of is that I need to wait quite a while. Let their let their inflamed, upset uh, digestive tract settle down. So wait as long as I can. I'm thinking 10 or 14 days and then give them a tiny, tiny meal and pray that they keep it down, right? I believe that the issue with snakes is they're not built for regurgitation like mammals are, like we are, right? We get a stomach flu, we, we throw up. We uh, eat something that doesn't agree with us, we throw it back up. We're built for that. Obviously, we're not meant to just throw up every day, but uh, it doesn't do so much damage to us when we throw up. But the snakes, they can get... To, pretty easily to where they can't keep anything down. If they regurgitate a couple of times in a row, they're going to have a, a massive problem. You can lose snakes that way, right? Where they just can't keep anything down ever again. So I'm going to like wait two weeks and give them both like a pinky mouse. <laughs> I'm so paranoid now. Um, and if I have to increase the rate of their feedings, you know, maybe give them a teeny tiny little mouse every three or four days, I will do that. That's fine. I just want them to make it. I want them to be safe. I think they're okay. I think their bodies are handling it. You know, when I check on them gently, that's why I don't have her out. I don't want to handle her and, and stress her even more, right? Otherwise, I'd be showing her to you guys. Um, but she is moving around fine. She's tongue flicking. No more fluids have come out after that initial regurgitation. Um, they both are moving well. They they don't act defensive like they're in any pain or anything. I know it's hard to tell with snakes when they're not feeling well. They don't give you signs like some animals do, you know. But you still, I hope that I can... I mean, I handle those snakes almost every single day. I know how they typically behave. When they feel comfortable, when they feel a little uncomfortable, I can usually tell. So I'm hopeful that uh, they're acting totally normal, that they are kind of... I mean, now it's Tuesday night. It's been three days. So uh, hopefully anything remaining in their stomachs is being digested now. And uh, anything that needed to came out. That's kind of what I'm hoping. Anyway, if you guys know of anything else, I would welcome any advice, any thoughts, any prayers, any help of any sort. I am very stressed out about this. I wanted to share it with you because I messed up. And uh, it's potentially harming my animals, and I'm not okay with that. I need to learn as much as I possibly can so that never happens again. And I wanted to share with you guys so that you would also be aware of this. Yes, a ball python can eat a pretty big meal, but be careful. You don't want to overtax their system. Regurgitation is not good. Um, so please be aware of that. And if you have smaller bodied snakes, you know, that aren't such chunky little guys like the pythons are, be even more cautious, right? You guys who keep corn snakes or garter snakes or any of those, you know, longer skinny colubrid uh, family, especially, but just any snake, just be careful, okay? If just because they can swallow the meal, apparently, does not mean that they should. So I wanted to be honest with you guys and show you what's going on in my snake breeding life, and I hope that they're okay. And uh, yep, that's my confession of my mistake that is also my warning to all you who keep snakes please be cautious with your meal sizes yes it's impressive that a snake can eat such a big meal but please uh, put their safety first and uh, hopefully that this is helpful to some of you hopefully this could potentially uh, help the health of your animals that's that's would be awesome if I could at least from this bad experience help you guys um, keep your animals safe. So thank you for watching. Thank you for all of your comments and everything. And until next time, this is the Reptile Barn.